The Earth is a watery place, but just how much water exists on our planet? About 71% of the Earth's surface is water covered, and the oceans hold about 96.5% of all Earth's water. The rest is found in ice caps and glaciers, rivers and lakes, and, of course, the ponds you're about to explore. Like those other bodies of water, ponds are vibrant ecosystems full of interesting things to discover. And wouldn't you know, they hold a few secrets as well. You'll see, here are 15 shocking things recently found in ponds. Deer Rescue Oh dear, this animal has found itself in quite a predicament. Recently, firefighters in Colorado came to the aid of a deer that had fallen through the ice at the city's main reservoir, ultimately helping guide him to safety by his antlers. They thought a coyote may have chased him out of there, and the local animal control was first alerted to the deer by a passerby, who noticed the buck was stuck in the ice. And then the local fire rescue was soon called in to help extract the animal by breaking a path through the ice. He was actually standing in the water, but too tired to move. A member of the department's dive team was able to lasso the deer's antler, turn him around and guide him back to shore, where he was transferred to Lakewood Animal Control officials. The animal warmed up under blankets inside their van before he was released around three hours later. If the animal didn't get the help, he definitely would not have survived. The incident also prompted authorities to issue a warning about the dangers of playing near iced over lakes. If a deer can fall through, you can too. Firefighters in Colorado don't just rescue folks from fires, they sometimes lend a helping hand to their freezing four-legged friends as well. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. What scientists captured in this pond has left people speechless. We haven't seen anything like this since the fictional movie Swamp Thing. This 1982 American superhero horror film tells the story of a scientist who becomes transformed into a monster through laboratory sabotage orchestrated by an evil villain. After finding a scary pond to call home, he falls in love with a woman and battles the man responsible for it all. But this was not a true story, so no wonder scientists were freaked out when they came across this pond monster. But we have to admit that it isn't entirely unfathomable that this mystery creature could be the result of some dangerous experiment in a lab somewhere. This creature doesn't look like anything that formed normally like other things that would call a pond a home. As for the movie, the film did well on home video and cable and was followed by a sequel, The Return of Swamp Thing in 1989. One thing we know for sure, if we discovered this monster, we definitely wouldn't want it to return, ever. How about you? What would you do if this swamp thing crossed your path? Tell us below in the comments with the hashtag sweet topic. Fire Pond Have you ever seen water on fire? We don't recommend trying this. However, it's quite a strange effect. Methane is a highly flammable gas, and millions of the world's bodies of water are producing a lot of it. The amount of methane released by one pond won't have much effect but the combined emissions from the millions of methane lakes across the world are more damaging. We don't want to set the world on fire, now do we? The gas is produced in two ways. It's either bacteria as they feed on organic matter, such as leaves and dead animals, which have fallen into the lake or the flammable bubbles have come alive in the melting permafrost. Thanks to rising global temperatures, the permafrost in the earth is thawing, and it's carving a hole through the bottom of many bodies of water around the world. And as you can see, methane gas can leak out. In the summer months, bubbles of methane float to the surface and pop, releasing the explosive gas into the air. However, if the lake freezes over in winter, the methane bubbles become trapped under the surface, creating spectacular patterns in the ice. These lakes are being closely monitored by scientists because methane is a greenhouse gas 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Cottage Carousel The winter can be cold and dark, but that's not reason to not be creative. An energy expert inventor in Finland showed it only takes a man, a chainsaw, and some ingenuity to create winter fun. His huge ice carousels have been the latest craze here and around the world. A circle of ice 187 feet in diameter and some 800 tons in mass, rotating at walking pace on a frozen lake, powered by an electric outboard motor. This is an ice carousel the biggest yet. 
built by Janay Capiotto. It all started in the small town of Loja, where he built an ice carousel in front of his cottage. He cut a circle on a frozen lake with a chainsaw and used an outboard motor to make it spin. The video of the operation went viral. He has built a dozen ice carousels this winter, mostly around the metropolitan area of Helsinki. There has even been a live concert with a band playing on an ice carousel accompanied by a spectacular light show where people enjoying a sauna in a tent set up on a rotating ice carousel. Once you get the carousel going a bit faster, it can keep on rotating by itself for up to an hour. They certainly are an environmentally friendly pastime. There's no waste in the process. Just cut a circle in the ice and make it spin, either by muscle power or with the help of a motor. <laughs> Snake Friend This animal lover in Texas owns his very own private pond, which is home to a water snake that he has fondly nicknamed Big Bertha. Years ago, Tim Jones began spending more time relaxing down by his pond. Tim loves to fish, and since many wild animals like to eat the fish, it wasn't long before he had drawn quite a crowd. One reptile that often showed her face was Big Bertha. Bertha came up real slow and took a fish out of his hand. I just about passed out, he recalled. As soon as Tim got used to the local reptiles, he was kind enough to share his catches with every animal. Enticed by the scent of Tim's catches, she's been visiting him regularly to see if she can steal a bite to eat. The water snakes found in North America are non-venomous and they normally won't show aggression unless they feel to be in danger. However, they still have sharp teeth that could cause some damage, so it's best to err on the side of caution. However, while Tim knows that his snakes aren't a danger, he still draws the line at letting Bertha not get too close, much to her dismay. Bullfrog Builders Goliath frogs construct their own ponds, providing a safe space for their tadpoles to grow. They're literally bullfrog builders. The African amphibian is the largest species of frog in the world, weighing upwards of 7 pounds and measuring 13 inches, legs not included. The goliath frog's unusually large size could be connected to their distinctive pond-building behavior. Using time-lapse cameras, researchers collected evidence of the goliath frogs building their ponds that sometimes required them to move rocks weighing over 4 pounds. Goliath frogs are not only huge, but they seem to be attentive parents as well. The little ponds they make at the edges of fast-flowing rivers provide their eggs and tadpoles with a safe haven for sometimes torrential waters, as well as from the many predators living there. And that's why researchers think that the heavy work they put into excavation and moving rocks may explain why gigantism evolved in these frogs in the first place. Scientists have observed nest-building behaviors in frogs before, but nothing on the scale of constructing personalized aquatic nurseries. Goliath frogs are only found in Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea, and they're dependent on fast-flowing streams and rainforest environments. Caribbean of the Alps Austria is by far one of the most magical European countries with beautiful landscapes and natural sites. Aside from its ski resorts and tall mountain peaks, though, lies a natural treasure you won't find anywhere else in the world. Known locally as Gruner Sea, Green Lake is quite a picturesque spot, frequented by locals and tourists until about mid-June, when the trails and benches are submerged in up to 40 feet of water. As temperatures rise in the spring, the snow from the surrounding mountains melts down into the basin, which has a pond year-round that's only 3 to 7 feet deep during the winter, completely flooded tree trunks, trails, benches, and even a little footbridge. Because the winter is snowmelt, it's incredibly cold and incredibly clear. This high visibility, up to 160 feet, is actually what lent the lake its eponymous color and eventually its nickname, the Caribbean of the Alps. Also, the color of the water turns bright green due to the grass at the bottom. As you dive into the lake, you can witness benches, bridges, and trees that create an outstanding underwater landscape. The natural phenomenon creates an almost surreal underwater park for about a month when the water begins to evaporate again, restoring park access. <coughs> boiling Pond The Boiling Lake is a flooded fumarole located in a World Heritage Site on the island of Dominica in the Caribbean. The Boiling Lake is approximately 200 to 250 feet across and is the second largest hot lake in the world after Frying Pan Lake located in New Zealand. The lake is filled with bubbling grayish-blue water that's usually enveloped in a cloud of vapor. The air around the area is hot, steamy, and moist, 
supported by the sharp, acrid smell of sulfur. The first recorded sighting of the lake was in 1870. Soon after, researchers measured the water temperature and found it to range from 180 to 197 degrees Fahrenheit along the edges. They recorded the depth to be greater than 195 feet, too. Periodically, there have been fluctuations in the level and activity of the lake. Due to this, it will occasionally drain and even form geyser-like fountains of hot water and steam. Occasionally, it will even empty and refill amazingly fast. Further, this cycle sometimes occurs in only a single day. The rapid draining and refilling of the lake implies that it's suspended well above the local water table and that a continuous flux of steam or gas generated by an underlying magmatic intrusion drives water up into the lake. Swamp Demons Although they might look a little demonic to some people, there's nothing evil about these unusual creations. Living near the brackish marshes that make up this nature reserve in France, artist Sophie Priesti Giacomo's passion has always been to go into this swamp, walk along the creaky wooden bridges, watching the landscape change. Then she had an idea during one of these visits. The artist decided to mix sculpture with swamp algae. She noticed that the texture of the seaweed performed a lot like a human skin and that if left to dry, it assumed the consistency of fabric. And an art exhibit was born. It began with two, and a recent crowdfunding campaign brought eight more to the reserve. And according to the artist, these dark and beautiful swamp demons maintain an ongoing dialogue with nature. As you can see, the figures are modeled with mud and seaweed, with the algae drying within the elements. The colors, textures, and plant-based skin of these sculptures changes over time along with the organic landscape around them. The sculptures offer a chance for onlookers to engage in dialogue about biodiversity, and they continue to thrive in this natural reserve. They're not as scary as they look. <laughs> Fishing Frenzy Once a year, locals rule the sacred Antogo Lake in Mali, West Africa. Armed with baskets, feverishly hoping for a big catch, Fishermen file into the lake to grab whatever they can during the short-lived fishing frenzy, during the dry season here. People crowd around the lake, young and old, armed with cone-shaped fishing baskets and other handmade tools to catch the fish. Then all of a sudden, 400 bare-chested men jump wildly into the lake, grabbing whatever they can. About 15 minutes later, a gunshot in the air marks the end of the fishing frenzy. This is another great way to make fishing fun especially because this lake in Africa is a rarity in a country comprised mostly of the Sahara Desert, which undoubtedly lends itself to its importance and sacredness. Although the lake is sacred, within minutes the fishermen empty the lake of all its inhabitants, but as you can see, the fish are easily caught in the shrunken lake. Regardless, the Antogo Festival is a spectacle like no other. All fish captured are given to the oldest wise man in the community, who will ensure proper distribution among all villages. So the next time you go fishing and aren't able to catch anything, you could try taking a leaf out of these folks' book. Just dive right in and go for it with your bare hands. <laughs> Radioactive fish According to rumors, some pretty strange creatures are thought to inhabit the exclusion zone at Chernobyl, Ukraine. Thanks to a nuclear accident that occurred in 1986 at the number 4 reactor in the nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat. But these fish might be the strangest. These Wells catfish are actually living in the cooling pond at the power plant. The cooling pond pretty much acts as a nature reserve. In the first hours after the accident, workers here were trying to cool down the reactor at all costs. Later, they had to pump radioactive water from the building of the power plant into the cooling pond. More than 35 years have passed since, and the power plant is no more, but the cooling pond has a new purpose. Living in the reservoir, representatives of flora and fauna are affected by radioactive elements. Consequently, Chernobyl catfish can be called radioactive, but not mutant. But without a doubt, radiation affects plants and animals that live in contaminated areas. They're indeed huge, but they're no river monsters. They simply don't have predators. Plus, they're being fed by tourists daily. That's why they grow to enormous sizes. <laughs> A new land forming. This clip from India, which has now garnered millions of views, was shared on social media recently. However, the bizarre incident of land rising above the water body in Haryana is something one would not even dream about. The video shows a submerged ground rising suddenly, 
leaving onlookers shocked. The person recording the video is heard asking people to stand back as the land continues to rise. It's not yet clear as to where exactly the bizarre incident took place. Some netizens suggested that the land rise could have been the effect of tectonic plate movement, while another said it could happen as methane trapped in the earth gets released, getting the wet layer to form a bubble. However, a few people suggested thorough research of the possible reason behind the incident in order to reach a viable conclusion. According to local authorities who visited the site, this is not a geological event, but rather an effect of bad farming. Before the incident, in an attempt to improve yield, the landowner dug around 9 to 10 feet deep and filled the ground with rice husk ashes and sand. On top, he then sowed paddy crops. On July 13th, heavy rains hit the area and water penetrated the buried material. The pressure caused a rise in the land level. Sinkhole Pond A sinkhole is a depression or hole in the ground caused by some form of collapse of the surface layer, and they can be big enough to swallow entire buildings. That's why they've fascinated people for centuries. Sinkholes are a wonder of geology, shocking the senses with their immense depth and creating some of the most unique natural environments on Earth. Lakes, forests, caves, reefs, even wild species, and more can occasionally be found in their depths and they often permanently change the landscape in significant ways. Just ask the poor fish farmer in China. He lost more than 25 tons of fish recently after a sinkhole appeared. The water used to be six feet deep, but like the unplugging of a bathtub, the fish just drained out with all the water. Although the cause of the incident has not been officially determined, there has been speculation that the excavation at a local quarry is to blame. Locals reported that water levels in this pond in China were seen falling at a dramatic rate, and within hours, all that was left was a gaping abyss with a diameter of more than 16 feet. It happens in other parts of the world too, sometimes more than one in a small area, like in this Florida lake. Three sinkholes formed at once seemingly out of nowhere. Lake Michigan Crucifix for the first time in several years, it's visible to see the infamous Lake Michigan Crucifix. This great lake is home to the only underwater crucifix in freshwater on record. It's located about 260 yards from the shore of the town of Potoski in northern Michigan. At the bottom of Little Traverse Bay, the 11-foot white marble cross with a life-size statue of a crucified Jesus Christ is visible to curious spectators willing to venture out into the icy bay. The story behind the statue's final resting place at the bottom of the lake stretches back to 1956, when a local 15-year-old farm boy died in an accident. His grieving family decided to purchase the 1,850-pound crucifix from Italy for $2,500 as a way to memorialize him. However, when it arrived, the cross was broken during the transfer, so it then made its way here in 1962, after being sold in an insurance sale to a diving club. It was repaired in order to be lowered into Lake Michigan. The largest viewing was in 2015, when over 2,000 people congregated on the ice. It wasn't until 2019 that the conditions were agreeable enough to host another viewing. A hole was cut into five feet of ice for a clear view of the statue, which attracted an estimated 1,200 onlookers. Fish Drop the practice of raising fish in a hatchery and releasing them into a river, lake, or ocean to the supplement existing populations or to create a population where previously none exists is called fish stocking, and probably one of the most popular methods to restock fish is by air. Like miniature bombers carrying a different sort of payload, planes are fitted with oxygenated water tanks that can carry up to 10,000 fish at a time. Cruising at 70 to 80 miles per hour over the alpine lakes and other mountain ranges, wildlife pilots can flip a switch and drop their payloads from 100 feet or more above the water. It's raining fish. Seeing a cloud of fish being dropped from the belly of an airplane is a sight to behold. Stocking fish with airplanes has been a common practice for more than a half century. Before that, state agencies relied exclusively on mules and backpackers to carry fish into the backcountry. Not anymore. Today, much more thought is put into introducing non-native species as they can severely damage the populations of fragile natives. Practices lean more towards sustainability. Stocking is used to restore native species to waters where they've been overfished or can no longer breed. 
Stocking may also be done to increase the population of threatened or endangered fish. Bryozoans The word bryozoa translates literally to moss animal. What you see in this pic is not a moss or a single animal. These blobs are a large colony of aquatic invertebrates, bound together by their jelly-like protective sheaths, and they can be found in freshwater ponds and in the ocean. They are composed of relatively simple anatomical structures, including a mouth, a gut, and a tentacled feeding apparatus that emerges from the sheath to catch passing microorganisms to eat. The clear jelly that protects this little guy often picks up silt and free-floating algae, giving it the deceptive algae or mossy appearance. These sometimes soccer ball-sized masses typically become more visible in the fall when temperatures drop. You may not even notice them when they are anchored below the water surface. At the closing of the summer season, the colony begins to decline and individuals die off. The mass becomes visible at the surface as the organisms decay and gases collect in the membranes, causing the colony to float. The good news is that if these guys thrive in your pond, it's a good indication that you have a healthy, organic pond environment. Bryozoans also feed on microscopic organisms, both good and bad, so they may be advantageous to have around. Hopefully, these videos make you think differently about your local ponds. Why not do a little pond exploring of your own? You never know what you might find. Just like and subscribe to this channel first, you won't regret it.